Hi, this is Amy Adams. Welcome to the America the Dead podcast, read by me, written by Del Sweet. Copyright 2020, all rights reserved in their entirety. Episode 28 March 26th As Mike turned away, Patty, Candace, Molly, and Nell began to set up a plan for monitoring the radios. Everyone agreed that they would probably hear about anything coming their way long before it reached them. Molly went over to the garage a few minutes later and pitched in, helping Bob and Tom move whatever was in the way so that they could reach the racks and garage bays. There were two tow trucks that they used to do most of the work, but chains and muscle power accomplished the rest. In the end, they cleared out three stalls that they could work in. Molly stayed, and not long after, Nell found her way over and began to work side by side with her. The garage was a prefab steel building that, either because of whim of the gods or its design, had remained standing. By the time some others were returning with a cow and two large does in the back of one of the pickup trucks, the garage was ready to go. Molly and Tom wheeled out a towering chain fall for the hunting party to use to dress out the animals, and then they went back to work. By late afternoon, the third Suburban was well underway. The lift was done, brush guards installed, and they were working on the carrying racks. Mike and Ronnie stopped by to look over the effort and were amazed. The Suburban looked like something that had rolled out of some sort of a safari outfitter's garage or a futuristic end-of-the-world epic, Mike joked. But that sent them all into silence for a few moments, and Mike didn't mention it again. Molly and Nell were working on bolting a huge winch to the front bumper of one truck while Tom and Bob worked on stripping out one of the pickups to get it ready for a lift kit. Tim and Annie had made their way to the garage and then found themselves drafted and made part of the work crew. Annie was in the third stall, laying out the parts they would need for the lift on the pickup truck, while Tim worked at mounting the oversized tires to new, larger rims, using a pair of heavy-duty tire irons and his body weight to accomplish the work. He and Annie joked back and forth as they worked. They were using a small 12-volt air compressor to inflate the tires after they had them mounted. They both seemed to be enjoying themselves, Mike thought, and they seemed to be happy in each other's company. Outside, near the far end of the garage, the chain fall had been set up, and a group led by Janet Dove, which included Sandy and Susan, were hoisting a large cow up into the air. Mike, Janet said, as he and Ronnie passed by on their way out of the garage. Mike paused. We would like to smoke the rest of this meat. If we're going to be here for a few days, I thought... Mike nodded. Yeah, might as well, Jan. We have the time, he assured her. And it'll help to have the meat with us. Who knows what's ahead, he shrugged. Janet Dub turned away and Mike stood watching as the huge cow began to lift into the air from the back of the pickup truck before he and Ronnie turned and walked away. A few minutes later, the two of them fell in with Candace and Patty, who were sifting through what the chain stores had to offer in the way of clothing, canned goods, and whatever else they came across that they could find a use for. They passed by Lily, who had taken over the toy department, blocked off one aisle, and was keeping Brian and Janelle busy. She smiled and waved as they passed. Janelle waved back, her dark eyes finally looking rested and happy. Brian had built himself the biggest Lincoln Log village that Mike had ever seen and was now busy populating it with dozens of green plastic army men. Mike smiled, and Brian took the time out of his game to smile back at he and Ronnie. He held a large plastic Tyrannosaurus Rex in one hand which seemed to Mike about to wreak havoc on the village and its population of army men. A half dozen trips with Candace and Patty and late afternoon turned into early evening. Fires were burning to smoke the meat. 
Two large roasts were spitted over a huge fire pit made of veal stone. A stew was bubbling in a pot that had been suspended over the flames. Nearly everyone had found a reason to stop by the area that Janet Dove had set aside for cooking. Most arriving just as she had been about to send others out looking for everyone to round them up for dinner. The dog was running around in circles, happily racing from person to person, tail wagging crazily. The smell of roasting meat hung heavy in the still, cool air. Early evening. Everyone sat close together at several wooden picnic tables that Janet had drafted a few volunteers to bring over from the collapsed section of the motel. They had sat in a small clearing not far from the building itself, untouched, while everything around them had been leveled. The temperature was in the low 40s, but with the early evening sun still shining, it felt much warmer. Mike sat next to Candace, Ronnie on his other side. Across the table, Molly sat with Nell. They were both laughing, involved in conversation with each other. It was the happiest that Mike had seen Nell or Molly. Canned potatoes, fresh beef and venison, a stew that held a bit of everything in it, and a steaming platter of peas dominated the table center. Everyone had heaped up their plates. Two long eating thrown together meals of energy bars had left them all hungry for real food. Their basic protein needs had been met, but there was nothing like a real food to make you happy, Mike decided. He looked around the table at all the smiling faces. It was actually a mood elevator, he decided. What's on your mind, baby? Candace asked. Her eyes smiled, but her mouth wore a question he had come to know was more serious than her smile insinuated. He bent forward and kissed her, making the smile on her face spread wider still. I was thinking how happy everyone looked. He turned his head and let his eyes sweep the tables once more. Then he turned back to Candace, whose eyes and face now wore another look he was becoming familiar with. He bent forward and kissed her once more. I'm pretty sure I love you, he told her. She laughed. Pretty sure? She slapped his arm with one hand. You better be more than pretty sure, mister. Mike laughed and kissed her again. Positive, he said. I'd be lost without you. His eyes turned serious. That's the truth. His voice dropped to a near whisper as he leaned even closer. I love you so much that I don't have words for it. I only know it's real. I only know I need you. He kissed her once more and sat back up to catch Annie giggling and looking away. Candace laughed from beside him, an easy laugh that eased the seriousness of the conversation. I hope we'll have some time later on, she said her voice still low and husky. I'll make sure of it, Mike told her. I was looking at that garage building, Ronnie said from beside him. Mike nodded. It's one of those industrial prefabricated jobs. I put up a few, but I had no idea how well engineered they were. They hold up pretty well, or at least this one did. The building's not really damaged at all. I noticed that too, Mike agreed. What are you thinking? Well, Ronnie grinned. When we get where we're going, it may not be a bad idea for a dwelling, or dwellings, at least for a temporary dwelling until we build, if we build. Lightweight, easy to put up, easy to insulate, not bad in an earthquake, if that stuff's not completely done with us. Mike was nodding his head. I'm for it, but are they hard to come by? I mean, where could we get one? Not as hard as it seems, there are outlets where you can buy them in larger cities, and there are thousands already set up. We could take them apart pretty easily, take them where we want them and put them back up. All the structural supports are pretty much the same, if you pick the same model. You just add more or take away to make the building the size you need. Lightweight, so they'd be easy to transport. They'd go up pretty damn fast too, Ronnie finished. As my vote, Bob added, fast, easy, they seem solid. It will save us a ton of time. I've seen them around. I think it's a good idea. We wouldn't have to worry about wooden structures falling down on us. Mike looked around. Almost all the wooden structures are down. Concrete seems okay, for the most part. 
steel, but wooden structures just give too easily. Putting them up fast would also be a plus. He finished. He raised his eyes from the ground. He had a habit of looking at the ground to visualize his thoughts, and he saw that Molly and Nell had been listening to their conversation. They were nodding their heads in agreement. That garage is really solid, Molly agreed. The cement's cracked here and there, but the building itself held up really well, Nell agreed. I don't even like walking into a wooden building anymore. You can feel it move. You can hear the creaks and groans. Pops. She shook her head. Mike and Ronnie both nodded. It's a good plan, Mike said. He turned his head to Molly. Where did you learn to turn wrenches, he asked her. Molly smiled. My dad had a race car. It started out as a hobby, but became something else. He'd work on it all week long and then run it in the races on the weekends. She smiled shyly. When I was a little girl, as far back as I can remember, I used to go out and watch. She laughed. Pretty soon I was fetching wrenches, and then parts. She laughed again. The first time I came in with greasy hands, I thought my mother was going to die. When I was 15, my dad bought an old beat-to-shit Mustang. A 64. It was a project car, he said. We'd work on it in our spare time together. Finish it up and sell it for profit. She smiled and her eyes misted as she seemed to be looking back through the years. It took nearly a year of work. That was also the time I was eligible to get my permit. The day I got my license, he handed me the keys, she finished, smiling happily at the memory. Pretty nice, Candace said. Yeah, except it got smashed flat when this, she lifted her hands and gestured helplessly, happened. But once we're where we're going to be, I think I'll try to find another one. Or maybe a two-door 62 Chevy Impala. I've always liked the way those Chevys looked. She shrugged. Crazy, I guess, but I really think I'm going to do it. There must be one somewhere. I can see that, Patty said, or something else worth rebuilding. More than a few heads nodded in agreement. Sometimes, Patty added as an afterthought, the thing you find is better than the thing you thought you wanted. Nell looked at Molly. Molly smiled, and Nell leaned closer and kissed her. You too, Candace asked. Nell tempted me, Molly said. It's like Patty said, sometimes the thing you find is better than the thing you thought you would find, or wanted. I hadn't expected this much out of life in the old world, let alone this one, Nell said, smiling. But seriously, she worked her hand into Molly's and leaned closer to her. Mike's eyes swept across Patty's face, expecting to see a smile, but finding a distracted sadness on her face instead. Patty swept it away so quickly, though, that he wasn't sure just a second later that it had ever been there at all. Maybe, he decided, he had imagined it. After all, Patty had found the better things she had known she would find in Ronnie. There would be no reason for that sadness to be on her face. He found his own hand holding Candace's, and she leaned into him for a kiss. Get a room, you guys, Tim said as he and Annie passed by. Annie was blushing, but had a huge smile on her face. Horn dogs, Tim told her as they walked away, lapping with each other and holding hands as they went. Horn dogs, Mike asked. I don't know about you, but I am no horn dog, Janet Dub joked as she passed by. The thought of prim and proper Janet Dub making a statement like that caused everyone to crack up. Janet stopped, a shocked look on her face. Good one, Jan, Candace said. I can't believe I said that, Janet said. Everyone cracked up then, including Janet Dub. Hi, this is Del Sweet. Thank you for listening to this podcast. If you're interested in the books that go along with the America the Dead series, you can find them on iTunes or Google Play. Thank you for listening. See you next week.